Welcome everyone to my second video blog. My name is Katie Gans. I'm a speech language pathologist for the Tuscarawas County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And I'm here to tell you and give you some ideas of things to do at home with your kids while you're on break basically due to COVID. So today as promised, we're gonna talk about 10 things we can do with a glass jar. So number one, we have a sink and seek and find jar. If you don't have a jar like this, you can always use jars like these. To make a seek and find jar, you just take items around your house. In this case, I have some fun little uh, erasers. You're going to open them up and put them in the jar. I really like to do this with magnetic letters, but I don't have, I couldn't find any of the magnetic letters at the Dollar Tree. So you just put them in and then you're going to fill the remainder up with rice. Got a nice bag of rice here. You're going to fill the remainder up with rice because the goal is to provide a a situation where the kid actually has to look for whatever object or item is in the jar. This gives them a chance to practice talking about what they see visually. This gives them a chance to, uh, if you're using letters, you can talk about letter sound recognition. So gives you an idea. You're going to be able to see all the different items in the jar. Ideally, you leave a little bit of room, not this much room, but a little bit of room, because then they can shake it and try and find all the little items. So these are erasers. Like I said, I got them from the Dollar Tree. They're uh, animals. So they can talk about animals. They can talk about the pink monkey or the, I think I've got a, an orange sloth in here or something. So a lot of fun. Number two, sometimes it's fun to do what we call estimation jars. So you take a jar like this, and you can fill it with things like balloons. You could fill it again with the erasers or even just pens and pencils. You fit as many of them as possible. Make sure that you fill the whole jar. Then you're gonna have the kid um, guess how many are in the jar. Um, like I said, it's fun to do with balloons, M&Ms, something that they actually wanna get. So everybody makes guesses for a week. They can even Skype or talk to their family members and have their family members make guesses. You make a chart to graph who has the best guess. At the end of the week, you dump it out, you count it, and whoever has the most wins and gets the jar. And you can even send it by mail to friends who guessed via like Skype or Zoom. And this gives you a chance to also use skills in terms of community and mailing and getting out of the house. So number three, a terrarium jar. Super easy to make. Most people don't know the key though. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put rocks, um, like fish gravel rocks at the bottom. And then the secret is you put the coffee filter before you put the dirt, because the coffee filter, like two or three of them are gonna keep from the dirt going into the rocks so you still have a drainage system. Then you're gonna put whatever kind of soil you need for the plants you're using. I'm gonna show you a really big model I made and uh, that had peat moss, because I did uh, orchids in it. Um, and then you're just gonna decorate it however you want. You can put little fairy garden objects, Dollar Tree had some really cute gnomes and stuff. This is my very big example of one I did one year. You can see, you can see the gravel on the bottom and the peat moss and the orchid. So a lot of fun. The kids can decorate however they want, especially for rainy days when you can't get outside. It's nice to have a little bit of inside or outside inside. So our next idea is a lava lamp jar. These are super fun. Again, you take your mason jar. You're going to color some water. You're going to take um, food coloring and put it in water so that the water becomes a different color. Then you're gonna fill the jar up most of the way with oil, any kind of kitchen oil works. Then you're gonna put the water back in. The water should all sink to the bottom because it's heavier than the oil. And then you're gonna put in the Alka-Seltzer tablets. That's the secret ingredient because it'll make the water bubble up through and create a lava lamp effect. I warn you right now, you're gonna go through the whole box of Alka-Seltzer, so buy them as cheap as you can find them. The cheapest I found is about 350 a box. That was doing really well at a Mark's. All right, next idea, number five, an actions jar. That's where you take popsicle sticks and you write on them different actions. It can be jump or run or five jumping jacks. It can be walk like a frog or pretend to be a cat. And you put them in the jar. And then whenever you want to, you have everybody pick out a stick and you just do the different actions on the jar. It's a great brain break that can be used in classrooms. It can be used in your home. All you need is just a, a little bit of area to be able to do that action. If you have things like a trampoline or a swing, you can include those in your activity jar. A seed jar. 
I don't know about you, but this is the time of year when I love to start sprouting seeds. And so you're gonna wanna use seeds though that are pretty large. So green bean seeds are probably your best bet. You fill this jar with cotton or wet paper towels. Make it so that you can still see that the seeds are visible. And you're gonna have to keep watering it a little bit every day to make sure it stays moist. But what you're gonna see is that these seeds are going to start sprouting and you'll see them sprouting through the sides of the jar. You can even start charting growth. You can start talking about the plant cycle. Lots of fun. Again, cheap activity, $1 at the Dollar Tree. So a scavenger hunt jar. I love scavenger hunt jars. Kind of similar to the action jar in that we're gonna start with our popsicle sticks. But instead of writing an action, you're gonna write an object, something in the house. And then you have kids pick maybe five or six sticks out with the names of the objects on them or little pictures of the objects if they're not reading yet. And whoever finds their five objects first wins. You might wanna make sure that these are things that are out and about and things the kids are allowed to pick up. You know, Maybe a pencil could be one of the objects and um, paper towels or, or soap or something so that all these different objects are things they can gather and you can give them a little shopping bag so that they have to run around the house finding these things. Make sure to set down ground rules. Maybe no running. All right, um, sensory jars. Sensory jars are another one of my favorite things to do. This is one of my sensory bottles I've made. It's basically just clear school glue, glitter, and water. And that's it. You can add in like the, the water beads if you have any. You can add in glit, you know, uh, sequins, or heck, you could add in the erasers I just got if you wanted to do that. They're real simple, real fun. They're also great for time out if the kids are getting kind of rowdy, homeschool's getting a little crazy. You know, you just wait till the glitter goes down and then you can finally get up. Also good for study sessions if you want a timer for them to have to study. All right, number nine, a nature jar. Sometimes I like to go on nature walks with the kids. And then what we'll do is we'll put items in the jar and we'll see what animal would eat most of the items in the jar. So would you have a bird jar or is your jar more of a squirrel jar? So just go out, find stuff in nature, put it in the jar, and then do a little bit of research to see who would eat most of the things in the jar. Lastly, we have a tissue paper luminary. That's simple. You're just gonna take some tissue paper, wet it with glue and stick it on your jar. Make like a stained glass pattern. There is no wrong way to do this. Then you get one of the little votives. Again, you get them four for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, which is still open. And then you just put them inside and everything's good. So thanks so much for watching my blog. Uh, next week, we're gonna talk about things we can do with Easter eggs. I love Easter eggs, one of the greatest things for instruction. Uh, please post a comment or uh, you can always send me a question if there's something else you want me to do. Thanks so much, have a great time.